But no, all the way, I can't say Israeli anymore. He's been here so long. Uh, Sharon, Siebert, welcome. How are you? Lovely. So just for context, um, we're going to chat about your new song a bit later on. We're going to get to know you. But we used to work together okay, pre-COVID pre -COVID. for about three years. Um, it yeah. was a corporate that booked us, and it was actually amazing for also women's walk, breast, yeah. breast cancer, yeah. uh, breast cancer, breast cancer they awareness. Pink, pink drive. There was the pink drive, and it, we, we did it in Bloemfontein, Pretoria, Kimberley for three years in a row, different weekends. And it was so funny, when you sat down, you mentioned it was also this early. I Same mean, it while. started, we were there just like yeah. before six, and you entertained the people, that's why I got to know you, and I was so glad getting your first single that's recorded as an artist. Um, so welcome. Thank you, well, thank you for having me, it's lovely. Yeah, I, I paid someone to have you here. Uh, so you've been playing music for 40 years, yeah. but a working musician for over 30. But let's start uh, being born in Israel. 24 March 1973. Yeah. Where in Israel? Uh, born in a, a town called Netanya. It's 20 odd k's north of Tel Aviv on the on the beach, uh, by the beach. Um, yeah, grew up there. And then my parents went down to uh, the Sinai Desert, uh, which was conquered in the 67 war. We stayed there for a few years, and we went back after they gave it back in the uh, peace. They gave, made peace with Egypt. Mm. And then why move to South Africa in 95? How old were you? Um, I was 20, 22, 20, 20 23. Okay. Uh, I actually came here with my dad. He immigrated in 1990. And I stayed here for almost a year. And I went back. I did my army service. Had yeah, everyone to, still have do. Have to, we have to. Have to do the army service. Yeah. You can't get away from it. No, you can't. And it's, and it's, and it's male and female. It's the both, yeah. Both. Guys do three years. The females do uh, two years. So you did three years army training. Can you believe it? You still got a gun. I have my <clears> mouth. <laughs> it's Your worse. Mouth. It's worse. So you, you moved here then, you came back because then you were a uh, Mossad. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Close enough. A, mus a musician Mossad. Yeah. No, you're not a spy. You just want to make it clear. Maybe you are. We never know. With the Israeli, you'll never know. Yeah. I can't, I can't say. Yeah, let's just, let's just park that one for a while. Um, so now with the, with the music, you know, did you start at a young age? Yeah, my, my mom, actually, uh, when I was uh, uh, eight or nine, my parents divorced when, when we were younger. Uh, my mom dated a musician, a pianist, and um, so bought a piano and put me into piano lessons when I was nine. Mm. I took that up for about six, seven months and I got bored because yeah. that's just, you know. You're not Liberace? No. And, um, and then I started, you know, I was DJing from the age of 11. That's where I started making money. Uh, DJing at the age of 11, but those days we were playing like the Joshua Tree kind of stuff, you know, mm. and, you know, Smith's The Cure, that's what was, was on for the parties, you know. And then picked up on drums when I was about 14 or so, and when I did my army service, I actually broke my legs, couldn't play drums, picked up a guitar, my life changed. Okay, you used the word legs, both yeah. legs. Yeah. So were you, were you facing like a tank? A little bit less than that, but yeah. No, it's, it's a hectic training, hectic, very really hectic. I mean, I was weighing like 58 kilos and I had 70 kgs of, of stuff on me. And you just went... Yeah, I, I fell oh. down and uh, hurt this left leg first and then, you know, uh, they, you, you can't say, ouch. <laughs> you just, they say, just, you must carry on, you know? Yeah. So we carried on and hurt the, legs, the next leg and eventually carried me out in the stretcher and, yeah. I know. Yeah, I, it was At a least you know I know. It, yeah, I know. Yeah. Why Why you not fluent in, uh, since 95 in Afrikaans? I'm very disappointed. I can Bicky Prat, Marie Mastarach, Prat met me as a belief. They sing. Yeah. You see, I think that's the only Israeli person I know. I have speak. other words, but I'm not allowed to say them yes. on TV. We used to use those words when it was very early, and in, especially in winter with that walk. Um, Hectic, yep. hectic times. Okay, so we're going to find out about, I want to, f not now, uh, still got a lot of questions, and then we're going to get to know Israel better together. That's a surprise. You and me both. Yeah, you a and lot me both. Of a lot of changed. Yeah. I haven't been in a while, I've been doing it for a while. I've got some facts to test Okay, you. cool. And myself, because I've only learned it this have, morning. Have you learned some language? No, you're going to teach me. Okay. Okay. I should need... 
ingeskakel het, ons gesels met Sharon. Sharon, Siebert, welkom. Is dit Sharon? Sharon Seibert. Seibert. But, but Seibert, but is Seibert a Israeli it surname? It's actually Czech. Oh, yeah. okay. So we, 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 as you mentioned, you can see on YouTube, you can see it's not ingeskakel, it's not all the path of Israel, but you, you've been here since 1995. But just take me, uh, I mean, this country as well, it was 1995, was still, but it was a nice feeling. You know, it was amazing. We Very were different. still in the Rainbow Nation feeling. Yeah. But where, where did you start getting your foot into the music industry? Uh, I think actually on the day that I landed, my dad said we were living in Esland, next to Esland Street in Pretoria. Yeah. And my dad said, there's a music shop there, a shop called Music Mate. And I walked in and just started making friends with people. And um, there's people said to me, well, you know, uh, you got to see this band. you got to see this band. And it was in the old uh, Menon uh, Retail Park, I think, or uh, the band called Georgia. You know, Andres and yes. Guppy and them were playing yes. at the time. And that's kind of how, you know, uh, and then, you know, later on I met the guys, what we became just Ginger. Mm -hmm. So it was a band called Two Princes, mm -hmm. Brent Harris and them. And, you know, that's how you start making friends, you know. Mm -hmm. I started playing in a band, a local band, and we started playing all around. And... Um, yeah, and then I got a call from Amersham mm. and I think it was early 96 and uh, the guitarist John from 363 left yes. eventually to start 363 and uh, I played with them for a while and that's you know how things just rotate and at the end of 96 I decided to start my own band which uh, played all around the country and overseas mm. we did a few contracts overseas and you know that's how you start making friends I, I played alongside all these little cover gigs with likes of Dozy and mm. you know all these guys, you know, before they, I knew all of them before they became famous. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Because it, it all started for them after 2000, 2001, 2002. It started picking up the whole African scene. Yeah. And um, but also, if you if you, if you mention Georgia, you mention Dozy, uh, you know they're fantastic with covers. And I've seen you uh, on stage with about three, four thousand ladies early in the morning and really getting a party going. Yeah. Um, so just curious, you know, I'm just curious, how many covers can you do? How many covers you know? Well, uh, with my one-man band set up right now, I have, you know, you just, it's, I like to make my own back tracks. Mm. That's, that's what unique about what I do. So I, I make my own. So it, it, it takes a while to make a back track, you know, take a few mm. hours. So I've got about 500 songs. But when I was playing with a live band, uh, we were doing, what's that, 1,000, 1,000 to 500 songs, um, out of memory. Yeah, out of memory. Yeah. 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 And you, you also played, performed for President Cyril Ramaphosa. Yes, I was very fortunate for that. Uh, um, I have a, a, a friend, she came with another friend to see me play, and she booked me for one of the President's uh, uh, foundations mm. uh, uh, gigs. That was really nice. Mm. So now your first single, Hello, It's Us. Who's us? <laughs> it's a it's a story about uh, about a, 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 you know when you have a, a someone you love and they love you back and but it doesn't always work mm. and it, you keep on like trying and trying and trying and you, you know you get back together and you break up you get back together and you break up so it, it, this is what's like hello it's us you know mm. it doesn't matter how things fall apart but it's us so that was my first single in January. And, uh, and why, why do you think it took you so long to do re, uh, this original song or first single, put it out there, record that's it? That's a really good question. I, I, would, I would put it down to just, you know, we, I think as artists, we all doubt ourselves. Mm, mm. And I just, you know, I think all my friends doubt themselves mm. as well, but they just stopped doubting themselves and they went, oh, they said, well, no, 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 despite the, the fact that they doubt themselves, they're just going to do it. Mm. It took me 25 years to stop doubting myself and just go, well, let me just do it. That's amazing. And I also think it's very difficult because you you know the best of the best songs, if you say like 500 covers or 1,000 covers, and you, you will always compare. You go like, yeah. this is my own song, and you think, yeah, I mean, compared to whatever, the yeah. Joshua tree, like you mentioned, is this good enough? Maybe that's an influence as well. I think I saw a meme on Facebook a while back, and it really hit a chord with me where it says, um, we judge ourselves, our own art, by our own standards, but, you know, we, we, we look at our art by through our own eyes mm. and we always doubt ourselves we always say it's not good enough mm. we always wait until we get a little bit better but it's always it's always going to be your art so even if you get better you still judge yourself by the same standard mm. so you, you take the most but the thing that's most unique about you 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 scrutinize it mm. 
And I think that's also my problem because I'm also a producer. Mm. I mean, I've produced for other people. I've produced Vase Your Mace, mm. the, the album. That's amazing. Yeah. I, and people don't know it. I've worked with Jennifer Zamudia. She had a, like a contemporary, adult contemporary uh, album. Uh, she will sign up to a record label. Now that I've done her album. I've worked with many, many artists that I've produced for or, or played on the albums. Mm. Albert DeVette. The, mm. uh, the, yeah, he's uh, quiet now, but he had amazing um, songs, Albert. He's an amazing artist. Yeah. Uh, the album that had that Seven Delan song on mm. it. So I played bass on that album. But I was involved in some of the, you know, uh, arrangements. Mm. Um, so, you know, so you judge your own, you know, they said mm. that the, the, the guy that makes shoes walks around barefoot and that's... Mm. Probably, that's a beautiful saying. Are you, are you going to work on more songs? I'm always working on stuff. No. I'm so always working on stuff, yeah. I've been compiling an maybe. album for like 30 years now. Almost mm. 30 years I've been compiling an album. But now it's in the making of mm. getting, getting it done. And you're going to perform it, Nedna, for the first time. Nedna, that's Afrikaans. Okay, so, uh, will you ever go back to Israel? You see yourself as South African now. But you, especially now with the, I mean, our country is, it's a lot of people leaving. Everybody asks me. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent, a couple of years ago, it was, I spent half my life there, half my life here. Mm. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm a South African now. I mean, mm. I, there's no music scene in Israel that, that appeals to me. Mm. You know, um, it's a very niche specific and they're, they're, I'm, I'm kind of a pop rock kind of guy, mm. a little bit leaning towards the rock a little bit more. And th that scene has, has never been in Israel. Mm. And when I came here, the, the scene was very much fertile ground and just beginning, you know. Mm. And, um, I, and my kids are here and, you know, mm. I, I went, I'll go to Israel to visit. I have to go next year as my, my sister's son's bar mitzvah. Yes. So she said, if you don't come and bring your guitar, so I have to go, but yeah, other than that, I'm 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 staying. No, yeah. and if you if you uh, we're gonna we're gonna do this um, fact about about Israel in the next segment. Um, it just this may be a difficult question, but I think South Africa compared to Israel, they're both controversial countries. Yes. Yeah. Very much. Um, uh, so, what still keeps you positive about South Africa? Man, it, it's. it's you know, it's very difficult to stay positive. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, especially when it's such a tumble. Things mm. take, they've taken such a tumble. But you know, um, love, just love. Love is the the, 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 the only way forward with mm. anything. Mm. And everything points, points towards love at some point. And I think at some point things have to, you know, the seeds that's been sowed by love mm. will have to, you know, change. So whatever it is that's that's contributed to to. South Africa is somewhat in ruins in many ways. It's going to make way. Love is going to make way. So, mm. you know, whether it takes another five years, ten years, or hundred years, it's you know maybe not yeah. in our lifetime. I hope yes. very soon. But I mean, it is a beautiful country, and I've mm. seen. I've been here with, with you know, the first time in 1990, there was still apartheid. Mm. You know, and I've seen the changes. And in 95, with the rugby, you know, the mm. world rugby that we were like, I mean, the celebration. Everyone is one celebrated. Mm. You know. That was huge, and I think we can get back there for sure. It's mm. just a matter of everybody. It, if you ask me about the Palestinian and the Israeli mm. conflict, the answer is very simple, and I think it applies to South Africa and any other place in the world. When both sides decide to put down their arms yes. and sit and shake hands, no matter what, it then, will be so yeah, So I think South Africa it's is actually so easy. Yeah. It is easy. It's just, you know, when you talk about religion and mm. piece of land, and, you know, everybody's got their own culture and everybody wants to protect it. That causes conflict, and it's never going to be put aside. Lekker diep gesels ons nou. Um, ons gaan nou verder chat. So jy kan ingskakel blij met net nou, sing hy vir ons, Hello, it's us. Kom ons gaan groen.